Hey, what's going on, guys? This is going to be my out of box review for the HGUC Gyan Krieger. Once again, this was a premium Bandai kit, and this video is sponsored by USA Gundam Store. So, a big thank you to them for that. You guys can check out the link to their site down below. Use my coupon code there, Zakorilius10. They do carry P Bandai kits there too. If you guys are looking for a place to buy those there in the US, you can check those out there. So, this kit basically, um, it kind of surprised me in a few ways, but it was pretty much exactly what I expected. Basically what this is, is just a reskin of the HGC Revive Gyan, but there's a lot more reskinning than what I was expecting. If you guys saw in the unboxing, there was very little of the Revive Gyan actually in there. I think it's basically like they reused some of the joints, but then just remade everything else. But everything else still works pretty much in the exact same way. They just change the armor. So like a lot of times when that happens on P-Bandai kits, when they're remaking some parts of it, those new parts that they're making are just kind of like simplified versions and don't always like work as well. This is like the exact same kit, but everything on the outside is just shaped and colored a little bit differently. So it's a really, really good kit. Basically, if you've, if you've seen my review of the Revive Gyan, then this is going to be like exactly the same. Just this one's purple and a lot more angular looking and a lot more cool looking in my personal opinion. I'm not really a big fan of the classic Gyan design. I much, much prefer this version. Still, the pointy head is not entirely for me. I'm not still huge on the head of it, but this overall is a big, big improvement for me over the original Gyan design, so I like it quite a bit. Building the kit, fun, simple. There's very few seam lines on it. There's very few stickers on it. It does have some cool accessories, albeit pretty basic, but it's that's every other version of the Gyan. It doesn't really have a whole lot of accessories, so you can't be too surprised there. Okay, so real quick to talk about those few accessories that it does come with before we get into the articulation. As you can see on the kit there, it has a set of holding hands, but then we do also have a third hand option for this. This is a holding hand that is slightly bent, and the thing about this hand is that it has a joint in the wrist. So again, this is the same thing that we had with the Revive Gyan before. And that is, of course, for holding this beam lance, which is a really cool weapon. We have some clear orange here for the beam, which is two halves that fit together, but you can't really see the seam line too well. You can kind of see it there. Uh, so it's not too bad. I think it's okay. And then we have our handle here in a light gray color. Very nice. It'll just pop the hand on there like so, and then it should hold that with no problem. So we'll see that in action here soon enough. Then we do also have a new shield here as well. Really cool design with the purple part laid inside this black part. I was worried if that was going to be a sticker or not, but fortunately it is actually a separate piece. You can see this back part is purple and then this the black part is the part that kind of fits around that. And then we have our part here for a handle as well. The unfortunate thing is that these beam saber handles here are just molded in. Those don't actually come out. You're not actually able to use those as beam saber handles. You could, I guess, take them out, but they don't really do anything. You'd have to drill some holes. You have to, anyway, you, do, you would have to modify them to turn them into actual working beam sabers. And then you don't have any beam saber effect parts. You'd have to take those from a different kit. Also, this handle here does rotate there at the grip, and that's pretty much it. it just it should just fit onto the arm. They're relatively simple. It's not very heavy, so it shouldn't really have any trouble holding that. And that's really it for the accessories. We do have a few leftover parts, although not that much. We do have the original Gyan's backpack, which is really only like three parts. And we have part of the Gyan shield. It's missing, uh, so I think, two parts that go over the top, the red and yellow part that go over the top of this. Uh, but we do have the full handle on the back, so it can't actually hold this or anything. So if you wanted to uh, do something else here on the front, you could, you could still sort of use this. So it's worthwhile parts to keep a hold of. As for the stickers on the kit, you can see we have a little pink one there for the mono eye, of course, and on the back, these two green ones there for these kind of cameras, I guess it would be on the backpack. And otherwise, in terms of any other missing color apps, it's basically just missing uh, like the red accents inside the vents. So inside these vents here on the front of the shoulders, I think inside these little vernier bits here, like on the side of the hands, on the uh, shoulders there, on the back in these vents here on the backpack, it's all supposed to be like red uh, and inside these vents here on the shoulders as well. Uh, it's supposed to be like red on the inside of the vents, but we obviously aren't going to get stickers for that. We I, don't, I can't really think of an instance where we have got stickers for like the color inside vents. Usually you're just left to just have to paint that either way. So it's not surprising that we didn't get stickers for that, uh, but it's also not surprising that it's a missing color app for this kit. It is an HD, so yeah. So let's talk articulation. The head will go up to there, not really too far, but down to there. In the stomach section, a very nice forward and back crunch here. A little bit of side-to-side -side movement as well, and of course, rotation. 
at the shoulder, you're able to bring the arm up all the way to there, which is very nice. You're also able to extend that shoulder joint out to the front a little bit there, not a whole lot, but it will help to bring the arm forward. Fortunately here on the shoulder, the seam line doesn't run all the way through the top of this as this top part is a separate piece. There's a little bit of seam line there in the corner of the shoulder armor, but that's it. A seam line here on the top of the body there as well, of course, a seam line here on the side of the backpack, seam line down the center of these gray parts. A seam line down the side of the forearm here where there's that purple part. A seam line down the back of the leg all the way down here, a little bit there at the top too, and then a seam line on the front of the leg a little bit right there. So it does have some seams, but for an HG, it's it's fairly regular. I think a lot of those you could probably very easily just turn into panel lines. Uh, here on the front and the back of the legs, I would probably just turn those into panel lines. It really wouldn't be too difficult. And it does seem to fit in with a lot of other panel line details and things that are around on the kit already. The kit does seem like, to me, that it has more panel lines, more details on the exterior compared to the Revive, Revive Gan, especially here on the around the waist. And this back skirt piece, you can see, is very detailed here. So it's got a really nice amount of detail to it. Back to the articulation, the arm will rotate, of course, at the top. Nice double joint there at the elbow, giving you a full bend. The wrist is just on a ball joint. As you saw, we have the, the third hand as well, which also has the joint in the wrist. As far as our front skirt armor, those can be separated and only move up to about there, as though they're getting blocked by something in the back there. The side skirt armor as well, only really going to be able to move up a little bit because it's just hitting the center of the torso there. But that said, you can still get the legs all the way out to the side so it doesn't really hinder the movement of the legs at all. The back skirt does move up and down a little bit as well and it's definitely worth taking a look up under the hood to see this really nice detail up into there. We have a separate part for inside there so you can paint that very easily and there's these nice thrusters there for some nice extra detail up underneath there. Very cool. And seeing as I skipped over it, let's go back to the backpack. Obviously these fuel tanks will move up and down and that's pretty much it. These little vents in there don't move up and down at all. This little center part, not really sure what that's supposed to be. It looks like it's supposed to be something. Whether that is, um, I don't know, I don't even really want to guess, but it does look like it's supposed to be something, but I just don't know what. Back down here to the legs, we can rotate those at the top. And we're going to have a nice full double joint there in the knee. No knee armor part separation or anything with that though. This little flap on the back does move up and down a little bit with another thruster hidden up inside there. And this little armor on the front of the ankle does also move up and down a little bit as well. Ankle motion side to side, pretty good. Ankle goes all the way back to there. Toes don't point down, but you can bring the foot forward and the toes do point forward. So we do have some separation there in the foot. It's not one solid piece. Up underneath the feet, some nice detail there as well. No hollow spaces, very nice. So while I think the amount of detail on this kit is very nice, and as I said, the color separation I think overall is quite good actually. It is missing some small color apps, but that's to be expected. All that being said, I do think that straight out of the box, the kit does look to me, it, it is just looking a little bit lackluster as much as I, I see all the potential there. But if this is as far as you're going to go with the kit, I'm not sure how well you're going to be uh, really pleased with it. I think I would definitely recommend at least going in and doing some panel lining on this kit, uh, giving it a flat a, a coat of flat coat. Uh, or I mean, glossy if you really want to go there, but I think definitely matte coat is probably the way to go. Just to make it look less of, like, like a toy, I think it's just the colors, that black and purple just really looks like a toy to me, I think. The official color scheme, I do really like it, but it's just that the seeing it just in bare plastic like this with nothing really done on it uh, is just not really doing the, the kit any favors in terms of looking its best. So I think, yeah, the kit looks good in these colors when it's painted up and like done all up, but just straight out of the box, it it's looking a little bit like a toy. And of course, the only other just main negative point that you could really say about this kit is just the fact that it's a P-Bandai kit. It's going to be more difficult to get, but on the other hand, it is from a kind of obscure game. It's a game that I know I've certainly never played. I know some of you guys are familiar with the game, uh, but it's just, I think, something that's the general fandom is probably not too familiar with. This is the design, actually, honestly, like I said in the unboxing, I had never seen before. When I first saw this, I thought it was a, a Build Fighters kit before I uh, read the label on it. And so I think that's, it makes sense that it's a P Bandai kit. It certainly probably wouldn't, I think it, it would have been popular enough as a standard release, but there wouldn't be that recognition there. I think it really wouldn't have been able to uh, achieve the number is good enough for it to be able to be sold as just a standard release kit. So, and while it is a relatively simple kit, it does have a list price of 1800 yen, which is a little bit high for an HG. So I'd imagine for folks living outside of the US, this is gonna cost uh, at least, you know, $25, $30, if not 40 or possibly higher. And then at that point, you know, you really have to be considering if this is really gonna be worth it for you or not. As for me, I'm very happy with this kit. I really, really like the design. And while I don't think it looks that great straight out of the box. It's an HG. The 
don't often look really amazing straight out of the box. They're always going to take a little bit of paint, a little bit of love to really make them look their best. So that's kind of expected. If you're able to get this at a good price and you like the design, it's a very, very nice kit. Again, based off of the Revive Gyan, which was uh, a very, very very solid HD kit. So if you were, if you like that kit and you've had it before, if you've experienced how nice that kit is, this is everything of that just with uh, some different exterior designs. So that's pretty much it for this review, guys. Again, a huge thank you to USA Gundam Store for sponsoring this review. A big thank you to you guys, as always, for watching. And if you do have any other further questions or comments, feel free to leave those down below. I think I pretty much covered everything. Like I said, it's a relatively simple kit. There's not a whole lot to it. It's just a really cool design. So that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Hey! Thanks for watching, guys. Remember, if you want to check the kit out for yourself, you can head over to USA Gundam Store. Use that coupon code, Zakurilius10. Save yourself 10%. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.